Hey everybody, what's going on fam? So I've got, uh, I think a pretty important um, discussion I'd like to talk about today. It's um, gonna be something that is a little bit close to home, but I really want you guys to think about some of the things that I'm saying. I mean like, really think about it. Ask yourself these things. I have a series of 10 questions that I wanna ask you, and I really want you to think about this because, you know, I, I'm not one of those people that just likes to put out you know, videos and stuff just for the sake of um, putting stuff out. I really want to engage with our community and I really want us to um, to, to change. I want to see us move up and and, and, um, and grow from the place that we're at. So I got, a, I got 10 questions I want to ask so be patient with me. Um, the first question is what is the last movie that you watched? I wrote them down yes. I didn't memorize them but what is the last movie that you watched? Okay think about that. What is the last passage of scripture that you've read? Question number three. Who was the last person that you called and what did you guys talk about? Number four. When is the last time that you prayed? I mean, really prayed. Number five. How long do you spend on social media? Number six. How long do you spend planning your goals for life? Number seven, how much money have you saved this year? Number eight, when was the last time that you've done a budget? Number nine, when was the last time that you've eaten with your family? And number 10, do you have a written down plan for your life? I wanted to ask these questions because, you know, a lot of us, um, we see all the, the wrong that is going on in this world. As the Most High Yah's opened up our eyes to see who we are, we're learning a lot. But the question is, how is it being applied to our daily lives? Are we so um, so pulled in by everything that's going on in the media, with politics, with entertainment, that we are neglecting our daily lives? I'm gonna be honest with y'all. This is a struggle for even me. Um, I, I haven't had a television and uh, almost, well, 13 years with the exception of uh, once when I was a caretaker to my mother-in-law who was suffering from dementia. So we allowed them to get a television for her um, so that she had something to do in the daytime while I was teaching my children. Not something we necessarily wanted to do because I'm not a fan of television at all. But this device that I'm holding in my hand is no different than a television in many ways. You could do so much more than you could on television uh, with this device. This device, you know, can be an idol or it can be a tool. It can hold you captive or it can be a Roman road for you to spread the gospel. It could be uh, a means by which you make a living. It could be so many things. But a lot of times with us, what I find is that it's the biggest distraction method that Satan has ever come out with because we're on this device so much but we're watching the same things over and over again because the algorithms put the same five people that we've been listening to over and over again who are pumping out the same messages and I'm not saying that all together that the messages are bad a lot of us you know, we don't really necessarily watch stuff for entertainment as much as we watch stuff for information. That's me. But there's something called information overload. And we could be so full of information, yet it has zero or very little value to our everyday lives. My husband and I were talking about this the other day because um, while I was on social media, there's some good aspects to it. I read about a story of a young couple who decided, and, and forgive me for that noise, 
Um, but uh, I read about a couple of, uh, I read about a story of a young couple who decided that they weren't going to get married in the traditional sense. They weren't going to have a big wedding. They instead had a five-year plan for what they were going to do with their life. This is a black Hebrew couple. They said, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on our goals over the next five years. And our goals include getting out of debt, starting our business, and buying our house. And so they put off a wedding because generally people spend between twenty-five dollars and $30,000 on a wedding. As far as I know, that's people in you know Western society that do that. Spend twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars on a wedding, in which they have to then spend so much years paying back that debt. But they said, "No, we're not going to do that. We're getting married, and, and and the purpose of us getting married is to unify into this oneness. Our goals are so much more important than this." Well, after five years, they became debt-free. They started their own business that was very successful. And they bought a, I believe they said they bought a seven bedroom house or it was a five bedroom house. I believe it was seven bedrooms, five baths. The house is absolutely gorgeous. And when I saw this, these young people, I mean, they were young people. They were probably still in their twenties. And I thought, wow, this is exceptional. I hear about stories of young people that are 14 and 15 years old that are going to these prestigious universities and it's always good and you see that and you go man that's awesome and you click like or you click oh you know hard I love this and then you scroll for another hour to two hours while you've wasted that time for your own life I remember back when I did have a television that one day I was watching it and I said I'm watching other people work that's what I'm doing. I'm literally sitting here watching other people do their job. Is it my job to watch them do their job? And I get it. Sometimes life is overwhelming. But y'all, we are floating like from one day to the next. We just bobbing our head going from one day to the next. Just trying to keep our heads above water. Hoping for a reparations check. Which I'm still believing y'all that we'll get. But the question is... What are we doing with the time that he's given us today? What are we doing with it? This was a prayer point for me with my children this morning. Was that, where are we storing our treasure? You know, the reason why I asked, who's the last person that you talked to on the phone and what did y'all talk about? Is because we still have so many people in our community that find their value in talking on the phone to people about things that the other person on the other line cannot change. You're talking to your girlfriend about what's going on in your marriage. You're talking about your, your husband because he did something to you. But in reality, your girlfriend can't do a thing about what your spouse did to you. They can't. Their hands are tied with their own lives and they are not supernatural. But when is the last time you've prayed about what's going on in your marriage? I mean, really sincerely prayed so that you can hear the Most High Yah tell you what you need to change about you. Because that's where he's going with it. He's going to correct you. And I know this for a fact. Um, you know, I asked about when's the last time that you ate with your children. I grew up eating dinner, eating lunch on the couch. Uh, we didn't really have family time, but... But studies show that families that eat one meal together a day, even sometimes just five days a week, that their children are actually, um, they do better in, in school. Their, their mind, because of their confidence level, is built up because of their love. Their love tank is being filled. They actually score higher in school, in class. Um... But the big one I want to know is about the written plan for your life. You see, there's something called macro goals and something called micro goals. The macro goal is the overall goal of what you want to do with your life, where you see your life going. Now, I know we have prophetic things happening, but I just had a great conversation with my brother and sister 
um, who moved out to Atlanta and I was asking them about prophetic things and what do they think is the next thing that's getting ready to happen in the Hebrew community is is y'all getting ready to you know to take us back to the promised land or to the wilderness or or should we be looking to buy land and and start businesses and one thing we all agreed on was that we got to keep living and let him be him and let him do what he's going to do in his timing when we live and we're busy about our father's business right where we're at we're productive he said when he came back that he wants to see us working he wants to see us busy about his business so we said we're going to keep moving forward while we're here we're going to bloom where we're planted until he decides to uproot us but many people that's not your excuse you're just overwhelmed with life you're just overwhelmed with the day-to-day -day aspect of life and you don't think about the importance of having these macro goals and then writing them down into micro goals that are achievable weekly monthly goals that are achievable all the wealthiest people in the world understand this principle that if it's not written down it means absolutely nothing and if it's not written down in a place where you can see it on a consistent basis it means absolutely nothing do you know how to do a budget are you saving anything I don't care if it's five dollars ten dollars twenty five dollars a hundred and fifty dollars you need to be saving something from every bit of money that is given to you something I don't care if it's 50 cents many of us will go to Little Caesars or Popeyes or one of these other death shacks and I'm guilty but we'll go to one of these places and we'll spend up 30 40 50 dollars on some food because we're hungry and save not one dime and we go from one month to the next in crisis mode from one month to the next we haven't written down anything we have not if you just sit down and take 15 minutes to think about what bill is due this week and next week and what's in your pocket today what you need to five ten dollars first start with a savings start with something small ten fifteen dollars I'm gonna put this aside for savings and then I'm gonna write down the bills that I that I owe and I'm gonna subtract based off of what I have if you just do that simple step I'm just telling you right now that the psychological effect that will have on you will just it, it it will, it will encourage you things won't seem as bleak because when you see it written down then you have an idea of where you're going but if you don't even so much as see it and you just get money in your hand as soon as you get money in your hand you're spending that money you're just like in a fog you're in a blind fog you don't know where you're going and then you could talk about oh well this person you know white people hold 90 percent of the wealth and black people only hold 2.6 percent of the wealth and all of that is true but black people when they have wealth and whatever they do have they misspend no, we're not taught economics in school, but you know, one of my subscribers was saying the other day concerning uh, the, 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 the situation that what happened with my pastor. He was like, we, we are in the information age. And ignorance at this point is a choice. And, and I, totally, I totally agree with that. I appreciate, you know, that, that word because, you know, that goes for all of it. That goes for, that goes for the pastor and that also goes for us. Ignorance at this point is a choice. We don't have to be ignorant, but you don't know what you don't know. And this is why I can't sit here and just entertain and just put out videos about this controversy or that controversy while neglecting what we need to deal with. We don't have to be ignorant. There's, there, there's a man by the name of Dave Ramsey who spends three hours per day talking about finances in a way that you can understand. He's not using some big fancy words he's just using flat out plain English and just giving you sizable micro baby step goals and I'm saying just start there his name again is Dave Ramsey start there he has what's called Financial Peace University but a lot of a lot of us are under spiritual strongholds and we want to get free from these spiritual strongholds and we think getting free from it is all spiritual but a lot of getting free from it is also tangible because faith without works is dead 
We have to put the action behind the faith. We can't just be hearers of the word only, but we also have to be doers of the word. So I want to I want to challenge y'all today. I want to challenge y'all in these things to ask yourself these questions, to really ask yourself. Even if you got to go back and you got to watch this video again and you got to say what were those questions that she asked? I really need to think about it and get yourself a piece of uh, paper and a pen and write down the questions that I asked and answer them for yourself. You can do it. You can have goals and you can stick to those goals. Just understand that, that that's what the devil is, is, is coming to target you because he wants you to be distracted and he wants you to be oppressed. Those are two of the biggest weapons he uses against the Hebrew community. So we have to recognize it for what it is. We're not ignorant of the devil's devices. But we are being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So let's stop rejecting it. And let's start plugging in and seeing how we can change for our family's sake, for our legacy's sake, for our future's sake, for faith, family, and the future of our community, y'all. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I definitely want to hear your, your, your thoughts below. Um, and uh, as always, I ask y'all to like and share and love yourself without hating your enemies. Till next time, y'all bless and shalom.